So joining us now is going to be New Jersey political, longtime New Jersey political uh, reporter, State House reporter Laura Jones. Laura, hi. How are you doing? Oh, really well. Th- so nice to see you both. It's nice to see hi, you. Laura. I haven't seen you in quite some time, actually. I know. I know. <laughs> New Jersey's like a soap opera, though. You kind of are around, and then you get caught back up in no time. It's great. Yes. Yes, it is. Absolutely. I love that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, so you know what? You've been covering elections and governors uh, for a while now. How is the race for governor of New Jersey shaping up this year? You see anything different for 2021? Yeah, I think the big elephant in the room, how we don't know it's the, the, the factor is the COVID and pandemic. You know, how is that going to play in the election? Because, you know, a week, two weeks can feel like a lifetime, especially in politics. And what we saw changing so much last year, you know, how is that going to play? How are people going to be reacting to the vaccine? Is it going to really protect our people so we can get back to business as usual? Once we get a better feel on that, I think we'll we'll know a little bit more about how the how the election is is going to play out. But it's definitely kind of the wild card. We just don't know how that is going to impact this year's election. But New Jersey's always we joke sometimes that it should be nicknamed the election state because there's always an election going on. And the entire legislature, not just the governor, the entire legislature is up as well. So it's going to be a very, very busy year, year politically in New Jersey. We love that. So uh, talk to us about the buzz that Governor Murphy could go to Washington, D.C. Okay. Governor Murphy had been an ambassador under the Obama administration, but he has said time and again, nope, I like my job. I'm not going anywhere. And he said that as recently as just a couple of days ago, following the inauguration, he went down to Washington, D.C. for the inauguration. He said, I like my job. I want to keep it. That said, when Christy Whitman was asked to serve as EPA administrator for George Bush at the time, and she left the governor, uh, the uh, office of the governor, she said, you know, it's really hard to say no when the president asks. So if President Biden asks him, it might be hard to say no. That said, he's on the record as saying, no, I'm not going to go to Washington, D.C. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Very interesting stuff, Laura. Um, So let's talk a little bit about the state of politics in New Jersey, since Democrats now control Washington. How does that impact our state? Right. So the uh, senators have a working relationship with uh, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, because he was a U.S. senator and they've got that relationship. And as much as things change, sometimes they stay the same. New Jersey always has had an issue getting back their fair share from Washington, D.C. So you put the pandemic, everything else aside, you know, how effective can our congressional representatives be at getting what New Jersey needs? Right. That's their job. They represent us in Washington. So are they going to be listening? I know Senator Bob Menendez has said he's been very pleased in what he's heard so far from Joe Biden as it relates to immigration reform. So there is that relationship. And uh, there will be back and forth. And even though the uh, the House and Senate and uh, executive branch is Democratic control, it's not by a huge majority. So they have to work together. Ultimately, everybody has to work together, whether they agree, disagree, um, they, they have to come together. So uh, so I think it, it should be positive and, and productive. And there will be a little bit of a sense of familiarity, I would imagine, with that relationship with Senator now President Joe Biden. Yeah, well, let's talk about the previous president, President Donald Trump. Right before leaving office, he pardons a lot of people. And of course, we have several here right from the Garden State, one of whom, uh, Solomon Melgan from Florida, you covered that trial extensively. Talk to us about uh, your thoughts on, on the pardons, especially on the Garden State side. Right. I was taking a look and seeing who are the possible pardons. And when I saw Dr. Selman Malgin, I kind of paused because I'm thinking, well, there's no way because that is someone who has a relationship and a friendship with Senator Bob Menendez. The two of them were on trial and it uh, Senator Menendez, um, it was a deadlock jury on if there was any abuse of power. And When I saw that he received the pardon and thinking, well, there is a relationship with Bob Menendez. And then I went and I looked to see who had sponsored it, who had asked. um, And Senator Menendez had, you know, put in that request. But I don't know how many other people he had asked, you know, about a pardon. And 
when I read Senator Menendez's reaction, he said, I'm honestly quite surprised. I don't understand. I wasn't really expecting it. I don't know what to, ex I did not know what to expect of the president. And that's about all Senator Menendez said. Uh, it sounded like at, on the surface, he was, he was, he was surprised. There was another individual, George Gilmore, a Republican powerhouse uh, behind the scenes, especially when it comes to Republican uh, uh, operatives. And when I looked and I saw he had received a pardon as well, I'm thinking, well, Republican, but I looked to see who had requested or who had signed on and both Democrat and past Democrat and Republican governors both had signed on to that. So it, it, there's always a little bit of a story behind the story. But when it comes to uh, the optometrist who Bob Menendez had gone on to trial with together, that was a little bit baffling. And I think, like I said, Menendez seemed to be surprised himself. Yeah, yeah. And there was also Kenneth Curson from Maplewood as well. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, so so many names on, on, on the list. And because more people are paying attention, I think, than ever before, because we're home, we're looking at this, I think things get a little bit more than they have in the past, right? So you have to look back and get that perspective, right? Has this happened before? Uh, what were the circumstances? And everything has just been a little off this year. So anything that you try to predict and try and put your head around is a little bit more complicated because there isn't a precedent for for the, in our lifetime of of what has happened. We've not seen, you know, how our pardon is going to work at work out in a pandemic and a Republican administration when Democrats are asking. So it is it's it's very uh interesting to watch and it's hard to even predict what's going to happen in new jersey because when something huge happens and you think oh my gosh this is the biggest thing to hit new jersey this this is unprecedented then all of a sudden bam another headline comes at you and you're thinking wow so it's never a dull moment and no not always a rhyme or reason but but it's interesting to watch it is. It is. And and we hope to have you back on soon, Laura, as this governor race heats up and all the other political stories in our state. You know, we want to get your take on how that's impacting us. So thank you so, so much for the insight here this morning. Oh, so good to see you both. Thank you for having me.